Welcome to another episode of Millennial Investing Explained. Here's today's question. So I want to talk about Warren Buffett. He's obviously very famous for his value investing, but he's also a really big investor in options. But that gets very little coverage in relation to his value picks. Why do you think options trading gets relatively little coverage compared to other strategies? And why do you think more investors don't invest in options? You know, I think Buffett's a wonderful case study for many different reasons. When you look at the businesses he's in, and you actually go through and read the 10Ks and the 10Qs, which are all public information anyway, so anybody can do this on Berkshire anyway, he deliberately talks about the value that is inherent in an insurance business. And then therefore, he's got sections when he started selling option premium, no different than what me or you should be doing generally as investors as well. He talks about the inherent premium that's embedded in volatility and the overpricing and volatility. It's like black and white. It's right there in his 10Ks and 10Qs. He talks about you know the implied volatility premium and why we're doing this. And so if you look at him as an investor, his biggest stakes in companies are insurance. All he's doing is selling option contracts. An insurance contract is no different than selling an option contract. Different underlying asset, same mechanics go into play. And so I would argue that his actions being in the insurance business, therefore definitely make him, if not the biggest, one of the biggest that's ever walked the face of the planet, option sellers and pure option sellers. And look at how successful he's been generally in doing that. Why do you think that doesn't get more coverage? I don't think it's attractive. I think it's complex to some degree. I think it's easier to talk about Buffett's investment in Apple. It's hard to dissect options trading in a 15-minute segment on Warren Buffett. I mean, it's a very interesting concept of why people don't look at that business a little bit differently. But he's a big proponent of the insurance business for very much the same reasons why I love the options business. That's why I've studied it. I'm surprised that, you know, and I certainly haven't listened to every question that's ever been asked at a Berkshire meeting, but the ones that I have listened to, there's rarely questions about options. And that kind of surprises me. I think what surprises me is that when he did a big investment, I forget if it was in 2007 or 2008, but he wrote basically like $5 billion worth of option contracts on major indexes. And so to me, a five and a B and $5 billion worth of options contracts is worthy of a mention. But you didn't really see it anywhere. In fact, it was like very loosely written about. Some bloggers wrote about it. Some other investing publications picked it up. But otherwise, it was very loosely written. And that was, you know, at the height of high volatility market collapse. And here he is walking in doing what you know many people would say you should never do. It looks like that trade's going to pay out handsomely. In news headlines, you know, seeing options trading and all that, that doesn't sell as good as seeing Buffett and Apple all in the headlines. Exactly. You know, interestingly, though, he hasn't, and his predecessor, Ben Graham, neither of them have talked about options trading in any of their books either, which I found really interesting. Well, he does in the sense that he's called it weapons of mass destruction, which would be the first question I would ask him. So they talk about the insurance business, the float model of insurance, collecting premiums, being able to invest those premiums and cover losses and damages and all of the investing concepts that make you know, regular investing so fun and interesting, but it's just coded in insurance. So if you replaced insurance in pretty much all of their conversations, it could easily be replicated with just options help. That's all for this episode of Millennial Investing Explained. Be sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, or subscribe to our YouTube channel to get even more free content.